anyone wondering why I included De Vere's trivia, it's because De Vere's trivia is only slightly easier than a PhD oral examination. Um, the easiest question is usually something like, the film Avengers, Age of Ultron, is thematically inspired by what 1940s Disney film? The answer is Pinocchio, but we didn't get that. Um, thankfully, my talk is not about trivia, nor is it about Pinocchio. My talk begins with a story about another student here at UC Davis, Rajiv. Rajiv was an amazing student who was a Rhodes finalist and went on to continue his graduate studies at Oxford. And Rajiv, among his pursuit of his major, gathered a tremendous amount of wisdom that he wanted to pass on to the next generation of Aggies. So to do so, he designed and taught a class that I was fortunate enough to take. The class was one of the most practical, goal-oriented classes that I've taken as an undergraduate. I felt inspired to take his lessons, add my own, and pass them on to the next generation of Aggies. But there was a problem. The academic senate said that students can't teach classes. For those who don't know, the academic senate is an organization on campus through which faculty help govern the university. And to them, undergraduates didn't have the qualifications in order to teach a class. So the rule was, undergraduates can't teach. To me and my good friend Patrick Sheehan, that didn't sit right with us. We both were inspired to teach Rajiv's class. We knew that undergraduates at other universities had that opportunity to teach classes. We thought Davis students should have those same opportunities. So we approached the Senate about changing their policy. In order to persuade them, we looked at other universities, universities that included Stanford, Berkeley, Rice, Carnegie Mellon, and others. In fact, if you uh, look at the logos, you can tell who cares the least about their student-led courses program. It's the one who uh, thought they could just write the word logo. But we approached the Academic Senate, and they were very happy to work with us. So after a year of crafting a policy, and after two years of pilot courses, eventually this quarter, we've achieved something remarkable. We're offering a number of amazing student-led courses, courses that might not have been offered otherwise, courses on amazing topics, like Jason's on about how origami, the simple folding of papers, can be applied to heart stents or satellites of Josh's class about how economists can define happiness, how they can measure it, and how we can optimize for it, or the class that I'm co-teaching with Vincent about how we can leverage cryptographic primitives and distributed consensus protocols to construct digital currencies, currencies like Bitcoin that you probably read about in the news. These are amazing courses, and I'm very happy that Davis has had the ability to offer them. But the point of my talk isn't that undergraduates should teach classes. Really, I wanted to mention student-led courses because it's an application of a principle that I learned from this gentleman. For those who don't know, this is Randy Pausch, a former professor of computer science at Carnegie Mellon who's well known for his lecture titled The Last Lecture. But Pausch is also known for a lesser known talk that he gave, one on time management, one that I found to be exceptionally practical. In the talk, he says, anytime anything crosses your to-do list, you've got to ask the question, this thing that I'm thinking about doing, why am I doing it? And here's the follow-up question. If I don't do it, what happens? The best thing in the world is for something to come across my to-do list, and I simply say to myself, hmm, no. At Davis, we have to choose when we come here specific things. We're told, pick a major. Choose general education requirements off this list, and choose major required electives off that list. But I think that this philosophy and how students see and approach UC Davis misses the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that these requirements are not chiseled in stone tablets. Rather, these requirements are negotiable, and more importantly, are determined by rational, intelligent people who are willing to listen to feedback. The point of my talk is this is that undergraduates don't just have the power to choose their majors and their extracurriculars. They have the power to engage with the administration, with the academic senate, to improve the structure of our educational programs and to push the boundaries on what a 21st century education consists of. It's this power that I think undergraduates vastly underutilize and is something that they should. Of course, I have a few suggestions moving forward. 
Student-led courses is the avenue that I chose, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. Take senior design, for example. This is a fantastic class in which community members, professors on campus, members of industry present real-world problems to UC Davis students, usually engineers, and the students work with those project sponsors to solve the problems. It's an amazing program, exceptional, educational, but it's not perfect. One problem is that we restrict, at least in my department, we restrict who can take these classes to seniors. That means that seniors can't take these impressive projects and go to potential employers or graduate programs and say, look at this thing that I've built because it's too late. Additionally, we say that students can only take this class once, even though they can continue to learn through new projects or deeper exploration of previous projects. I think maybe students need to be saying to the College of Engineering, hmm, no. There's also a lot of other problems. For one, student evaluations. They aren't publicly available, and to me, that seems wrong. As another example, consider the hiring, retaining, and promoting of faculty. Undergraduates are a sizable and growing fraction of financial contributors to this university, and yet undergraduates have no say whatsoever in the people who are brought to this university to teach them. That seems wrong. Additionally, we have this amazing system of general education requirements that's designed to create broadened individuals who aren't just specialists in one area, but understand other areas. But there are problems. Take, for instance, Native American Literature 5. It's a class, and if you take the class, you'll find that well over half the students are managerial economics students. Is it because managerial economic students are very interested in Native American literature? Well, if you ask them, they give a very different answer. The answer they give is that this is one of the few classes that allows you to triple dip your general education requirements. Simply put, it's too good of a deal to pass up. And it may be funny to some, but I think that it's also tragic in a way, because the point is to create these general, well-rounded individuals who have explored other topics. But the result is to create this sardonic, Calvin-esque expression of, I've memorized this fact long enough to record it for a test. I now intend to forget it for forever. I've learned nothing except how to cynically manipulate the system. I think undergraduates need to be saying, hmm, no. And I feel that in this talk, there's some important things that I have to acknowledge. The first is, is that students have a lot of ideas, but a lot of those ideas are really bad. Uh, the first idea that I brought forward to the Academic Senate was laughed out of the room. And I, I promised somebody to tell this story. So I had two classes that I really, really did not want to take. And I tried asking if I could just get out of them, but they were required for my major, so I couldn't. So I tried petitioning. And the department denied my petition and said I, couldn't take, I had to take them. And so I was looking desperately through the Academic Senate bylaws and regulations, trying to find any way out of these classes. And then I found this. I had no idea how no one had discovered this before. As long as you have a 2.0 and you're within 15 quarter units of getting your bachelor's degree, you get the degree. That was amazing. I didn't have to take those two classes. I sent this to my advisor, I was ecstatic, until she pointed out the line that I had missed. <laughs> if you're seeking to also make change on this campus, you're also going to need a lot of support. And I think it's important that I acknowledge the people who made what Patrick and I pursued possible. We had help from not only the Academic Senate, but from the Chancellor, the Provost, the Chair of my own department, faculty members who were willing to help me teach the classes that I wanted to teach. And without the support of these people, what I did would not have been possible. And what I want to do is I want to reflect on the fact that we have 28,000 undergraduates at Davis. Now, not all of them have excellent ideas, and not all of the excellent ideas are unique. But if even a small fraction of those ideas are unique, and if each idea is adopted and championed by just one undergraduate who's passionate about making that change concrete at Davis, then we are going to improve as a university in leaps and bounds. Returning to Randy Pausch's point is that ultimately the point of his talk was that doing things right is far, far less important 
than doing the right things. So when you have restrictions imposed on you and requirements about what you have to do, stop and think about whether or not they make sense and whether or not they align with your goals. And when you find yourself saying, hmm, no, then you found something that needs to be changed. And if you pursue that change, and you find people who are willing to support you, and you can persuade those in charge that your idea is a good idea that merits evaluation, you will make Davis not just better for you, but for everyone that follows. Thank you.